Hi, I'm Lucy from Sweet Poppy Stencils. I'm glad you can join me. Uh, this technique that we're going to show you is one of my most favourite. It is the heating technique and we're going to be using our beautiful gold centre dimensions for this particular technique and some of our beautiful um, Sweet Poppy mica powders. And it's to show you the, uh, the, the texture that you can get when you're actually using um, a heat gun with the stencil dimensions. We hope you enjoy the technique. Thank you. Okay, now for our second technique, um, we're going to be doing the wonderful heat technique. Um, and this is using one of the mediums, and all of the mediums bar the translucent will do this technique for you. We're then going to be using our beautiful mica powders. Um, because they have no gum arabic in, they'll allow the heat to bubble and um, also um, give you texture. So, as before, we've got our magnetic sheet, we've got our palette knife, um, our spreader and our tape as our basic tools. So, first of all, we're going to be putting our card on top of our magnetic sheet. Now, what we must do, because we're using mica powders, we must give it a very good dusting of anti-static. And rather than just a gentle dust, what I want you to do is I want you to coat it all, leaving the powder residue, so you've got a good amount of powder residue all the way over. If you're happy with what you've got on there, don't tap it off or blow it off. I know the temptation is there to do it. And then just pop your stencil. Now the stencil that we're using today is the beautiful steampunk butterfly stencil and as you can see I'm going from side to side and the reason for this is this channel here if you work with it rather than against it you're going to get a nice clean sweep and a nice um, finish. So we're going with our, as always our six pieces of tape so our first one and our second one, and again our first. I'm just making sure that I catch the end of the stencil and our second, and I'm slightly overlapping, and I'm making sure it's stuck down. Because we've used anti-static bag, um, I'm making sure that it's really stuck down because it will detack your tape, and your tape is already very, very low tack. So we've got six pieces. So we've got one, two, one, two, and down the side. So we're ready to go. So what we're going to be trying to achieve is the beautiful steampunk textured butterflies. As you can see, you can cut them out or you could leave them flat in the card. It's totally up to you. So first of all, we're going to be using the beautiful uh, gold stencil medium. Um, and this is one of my favorites. As you can see, it's a lovely, rich, creamy gold. So again, as before, we're just placing along the top in a nice strip. We've got our spreader, and at a 45 degree angle again, with hands in the middle, spread it on and up. If you miss areas, don't panic, don't worry about it. All you do is you take and you'd fill those holes in. Check that you're all covered, and then a nice gentle pressure straight the way across. So don't force it so it rips your tape or it pushes it under the stencil. It's just a gentle pressure. That residue goes straight back into the pot and those can go into a little bowl of water I've got to one side. Most important, get the lid back onto your paste. Put that to one side and we're taking off very, very gently. I'm not worried, I've caught that where the card was cut and it's got a raw edge. It's no problem at all. I'm teasing that off. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cutting the butterfly out. So, at the end. So we're going to lift up. Normally I would drag this um, to the end, but what I don't want to do is I don't want to drag it out of the shot. So I'm going to just try and catch it with my nail and tease it up if I can. Lovely, brilliant. It's easier to drag it to the edge of your table and then use your hinge and pull it off. 
as I said, I didn't want to take it out of the shot. So all I'm going to do is move my magnetic sheet. I've finished with that. Now, we're using the Sweet Poppy mica powders. And as I said, these have no fixative inside, which means they've got no gum arabic inside them. So that means that um, it'll allow the heat to come through and it'll allow the bubbling to happen. So let's just take a seal off that one. And then, so what we've got, we've got our beautiful copper, we've got the wonderful pumpkin, and then we've got the gold pearl. Now the easiest way to apply your micas, don't tip them from a pot because what will happen is it's quite a dense product and it will just go everywhere. All you're going to do is take a little bit up on your brush and you're going to distribute it like this. Don't be scared of your vibrant orange, it really does work well. Um, all our products, they're all tried and tested before they get branded. Um, it's really important to us that what we work and what we show you um, gives you a beautiful effect. So we're just gently tapping over and I'm going to leave some of the paste to come through. And again, a little bit more of the copper. Beautiful. Let's pop those to one side. Taking our bit of scrap again. And what you're going to do is tap off. And then we're going to just gently tap back over. And then we're going to get it off again. And most important is give it a really good flick. What you don't want is you don't want a heavy residue on it. Um, because when you bake it, what's going to happen is that will really ruin the finish for you. So as you can see, we've got a slight dusting. And what we're going to do is now we're going to use the heat gun. And with your heat tool, what you need to do is you need to get your heat up to the highest heat it can go. So burn it off first until it gets very, very hot. And then lift them up. And wait a few minutes and the trick is to just let it cook and as you can see it'll start bubbling leave it a couple of seconds and then what you do is you move to the next part and then you leave it a couple of seconds you move to the next part So we always, always cook from the front first. Whereas if I was using embossing powders, I would cook from underneath. Um, but I always cook from the front first. And just a couple of seconds, move it on, move it on. And then I turn it over. And then I cook from the back. It's one of my most favorite techniques. And if you're into mixed media, this is perfect. Because you could use this on canvas. Um, hard. The only thing I wouldn't use um, this technique is on glass because obviously the heat from the heat tool. And hopefully the camera can pick up the wonderful um, finish that it gives you and texture. It's not until you start cleaning it off that it really, really does come to life. Bubbles like mad. As I said, the only one that will not bubble is the translucent. It doesn't have enough acrylic base inside it um, to give you the bubble. So we're just, we're quite happy with that. So you turn over and you can see it's quite a wet base. And it just means that the card is being absorbed, um, has absorbed the moisture from the paste. So all we're doing is we're helping it to dry inside. If you keep eating the front, what's going to happen is you're going to overcook the skin. And when you clean it off and it cools down, it'll start breaking off. So we're just cooking. And we're trying 
and do it as quickly as possible. And I'm about an inch away from um, the card with the heat gun just to help it. And um, what you don't want to do is you don't want to burn your card. With the black card, it really, you know, it's a lot more forgiving than what the white and the creams are. And then we're turning back over. We're just going to check that we've caught all our little bits. So what you would do is you would now normally at home, you would leave this at least quarter of an hour. Um, let it cool right down because it's like a warm plastic. So I'm getting a tea towel and I'm just going to pop it on top. And then we get the best brush that I have found is, um, it's from B&Q. Um, it's an inch, about an inch decorating brush and it's a very soft bristle and all you're going to do is you're going to keep cleaning and clean off and you're going back and you're cleaning and we're cleaning the brush all the time on I'm going to put this up and show you and I'm cleaning the brush and I'm going back to it and cleaning the brush and hopefully you can see the shine that is starting to happen. I'm going to go quite vigorous. Sorry if it rocks at all. And it's just I want to get the... And I'm moving. And just keep moving your project around, bit by bit by bit by bit. Shift it around, clean it. Shift it around. And if you keep hitting it at different angles, you'll help, it'll help move the micas. I'm just gonna lift it up. I'm gonna get it into shape again. I'm going to... And hopefully, you can see the wonderful texture that it gives you. It's amazing. I love, love, love this technique. So, we've got to that stage. Nice and easy. I've used a nice thin card for this. I've actually used about a 250 um, gram card, whereas normally, if I wasn't cutting it out, then I'd use probably about a 300. Um, and that then would just help you um, keep it flat. Because obviously, it is going to distort a little bit through um, the heat. So you want to try and help yourself a little bit. Now I'm not the best fussy cutter, but I'll try and do this as neatly as possible. And then this gives you um, the idea of how we make the beautiful metal butterflies. It's probably one of the most popular techniques um, that I do get asked to do quite a bit, and it's never a chore to do this one. It's, um, it's an amazing stencil. Um, an amazing technique and I can see with all the new collection uh, how they are going to look like this it, it's going to be fabulous so we're just going around the wings and as I said it's quite rough how I'm cutting I'm trying not to hold the butterfly too much because he's still quite warm at the moment um, this is why we always say leave it about 15 minutes um, when we don't leave it, we flatten the bubbles slightly, but then that's, it's a personal preference. I quite like them quite flat. Um, I like a little bit of texture, but not too much. So. Oops. That'd be nice. Let me just have to excuse as I just lift it a second just so that I could see where I'm going. Otherwise we'll be chopping off the antennae. And just remember you may have some little parts on it that are still wet. So what you don't want to do is, this is why we keep saying leave it cool right down because you don't want to disturb them. You don't want to go to all the work of getting a perfect stencil image and then disturb it. So we're just chopping. And this is the hardest bit on the butterfly, is just 
the little antennae because you don't want to chop them off but if you don't want your antennae then there's no reason why you couldn't chop them off and just use some stamens um, or even because it's a steampunk butterfly why not use um, these beautiful uh, clock hands that you can buy um, or if you've got some broken watches then just use those so this is coming towards the end of it now so we're just chopping around and as you can see I'm being quite brutal with it Oops. Hopefully, we might be able to pass forward past this. I think it's almost like watching paint dry, watching someone cut out. So, coming to the last bit, now to shape your butterfly, I do find that a nice big thick round brush is the best tool. So let me push those out of the way, clear the work surface. So, I've got a nice big brush. This again, you could use as well if you've got one of these. So all I'm doing is, I'm just curving it. And again, if you've overcooked it, and I've done just that little bit a little bit too much, that's fine. And just squish, squish it flat and nobody will see it. There we go, perfect. So we just fold him up. And let me just get a bit of black card to just show you how far this can go. So, and then, and then, just shows you. And just by changing some of the micas, will create the most beautiful butterflies. And I hope you enjoyed that technique, and I hope um, we've inspired you to have a go.